Hi, my name is Alyssa and I draw a lot of Animal Crossing characters. I'm continuing drawing the new villagers from New Horizons I haven't drawn yet, so today's video is Sherb and the last one will be for Audie in a couple days, give or take Tuesday or Wednesday. So this video, since I'm doing a new topic for each one of these videos, I want to talk about bells and how making bells has become so much harder since all these new updates and all that. I mean, it's still easy if you do turnips, but turnips are stressful in and of themselves. So let's talk about money, making money, how difficult it is, my struggles with it, and all that kind of stuff. Um, if you're new to the channel, the only two art programs I use in this video are Procreate for iPad Pro, which is on the screen now, and then halfway through the video or middle of the way in the video, I use Adobe Animate to make flat vector shapes. So those are the two programs I use, Procreate and Adobe Animate. So back to making bells. So. <laughs> When the game first came out, making tarantula islands and hunting tarantulas was pretty easy. It wasn't as exceedingly easy as beetle farming in New Leaf. If you never played New Leaf, there was a little island you could go to where it was perpetually summer, and at nighttime a bunch of really high value beetles would spawn on the trees, and it was very easy to take a boat full, a boat full of beetles back to the shop and sell for like many hundreds of thousands of bells. It was just the main way to make money. It was kind of broken actually. But people broke the game similarly here with the tarantulas, and the first nerf to tarantulas happened when we went from March to April and all of a sudden you got these giant water bugs that they don't despawn, you can't scare them away, so you have to keep catching them in order for the tarantulas to spawn. Whatever, it took a little bit longer to make a tarantula island, but it was still doable. Now it takes way longer because they've reduced all the spawn rates of anything worth anything. Peacock butterflies, tarantulas, you know, anything actually worth catching in the game, they've just totally nerfed the spawn rate of in order to quote unquote balance the economy, which um, kind of sucks for regular players or people trying to have a regular gameplay experience. And I buy and sell turnips too, but I find it incredibly stressful and it's kind of broken as a way to make money. And if they really wanted to control the economy, why don't they have it so that the turnip spikes only happen like uh, to maybe 400 or 300 or something that's still a really good return on investment, but not, you know, 600, 650. That eliminates um, a lot of people making hundreds of millions in one go when they do multiple trips. But it also eliminates the stupid like black market of people asking for like 20 gold nuggets and five Celeste DIYs and all this stuff just so you can have the, the privilege and the honor of coming to their island to sell your turnips there, when in reality you're only going to be there for about 30 seconds and if they weren't asking and demanding a bunch of stuff, you'd probably be nice and leave a tip on the way out anyways. So I think curtailing the how high the spikes go or make a spike of over 400 even rarer than it is, I know it's probably exceedingly rare already, like, nerf that. That's the, that's the broken way to make bells, is turnip training. And turnip training is already stressful between people asking exorbitant entry fees and uh, finding someone who has a line of less than 100 people with a decent price. And, you know, it's, it's just so stressful. And you never have a decent sell price on your own island. God forbid you're able to sell your turnips for even a meager profit on your own island. So you have to deal with all this crap and all this stress of having to find someone with a decent amount of... Uh, turnip spikes and it's never in your own friend group either it's always some random person you gotta wait in a line of 500 others and hope that okay has anybody else used turnip exchange either turnip.exchange um, so <laughs> people will ask for you know five nook miles tickets or whatever and sometimes I cough up and I'm like whatever I have a bunch of miles that are just sitting there anyways might as well give this guy some nook miles tickets so I'll go sell turnips there, or I'll get ready to. Wait in the airport, I'm number 10 in the queue, I've been waiting for an hour and a half. And then the code pops up, I go to enter the code and they've, they've closed the island, they're done for the night. Like they wrapped it up the second I got the dodo code. Like what gives with that? <laughs> so I've just had bad luck and have had to end up selling to somebody for lower prices just to get the stupid turnips out of my house. And why can't you put the turnips in storage? And, you know, turnips are a whole nightmare in and of themselves. I can't wait to be done with all the Nook Miles achievements making like 10 million in profit. Once I get that last stamp, I'm officially done with turnips forever in this game. I, I'm just so over the whole process. It really stinks. So aside from turnips, there's no good way to make bells anymore except, I don't know, picking a bunch of fruit like that's a decent return but you can only do that every several days and realistically how many trees can you plant on your island in a way that's 
aesthetically pleasing if you care about that, which most Animal Crossing players do. They don't want to have just a, a fruit farm for an island, you know? They want to have a nice layout and there's only so many room for, there's only so much room for so many fruit trees on an island that actually looks nice. So that's not really a viable way to make money either. Fishing, I don't know if, did they nerf the fish, the rare fish spawns? I don't feel like it's any different, but maybe they did as well. All I know about is the bugs because that was like a big to-do in the Facebook groups. People talking about how tarantulas don't spawn anymore. And I noticed a huge visible difference in the amount of peacock butterflies spawning on my island because I have lots of patches of blue and purple hybrids and they would go crazy for those. You'd see four or five peacock butterflies spawning and now you're lucky if you see one, right? So I noticed that big difference. I haven't noticed a huge drop in fish, but getting decent fish is kind of hard right now in this current season as well. I guess a friend of mine who's a time traveler said it's better in like June or July when there's whale sharks and other stuff that's actually worth decent bells spawning semi-frequently. But, you know, it's not that common that you get an ore fish or anything good unless you're on, like, the rare fish islands. So fishing as a main revenue source, unless you're storing everything and waiting for CJ, it's not a very good revenue source either. That's another thing I want to complain about. <laughs> I, I realize there's so many issues stemming from making bells, right? CJ and Flick, they're awesome. They're wonderful. They buy your bugs and your fish for 1.5 times the rate of the store. So it, it encourages you to have that delayed gratification of like saving up your bugs and fish. However, why don't they come one day a week instead of now where I'm on like, what, week three with no Flick, week two, no CJ. And my boyfriend's house storage is to the brim with bugs he's been saving for weeks now. My house isn't as bad because I get lazy and decide to sell the common bugs, but he's been storing even the common fish and bugs waiting for these guys to show up. And it's like, that's not a very fun way to make money either because it ruins all your house storage and, you know, you, you're broke for weeks at a time while you wait for these guys to show up because you're constantly, or in my case, I'm constantly moving buildings and demolishing bridges and building new ones. So there goes all my bells. And I want to share with you all my favorite stupid person moment. Uh, my boyfriend and I, we went in together on a bunch of turnips because we decide one person's going to go through all the rigmarole of selling them per week because that's too much stress to put on two, two different people and we both live on the same island. So he went and sold the turnips this week. I made my haul of like 600,000 bells or whatever in profit. What did I do with that? I didn't put it in my savings in the ABD. No. I did the first option, which is paying off the last home loan, which I had no intention of paying off because all you get out of it is what? You can do the exterior customizations for free, which are only 5,000 bells each anyway. So I said, I'm not paying that off. I'm not wasting 2.5 million bells on that. I got bridges to build. Well, <laughs> I put the 600,000 into that. So I guess I've chipped away a good chunk of my last home loan that I didn't want to pay, but then I was back down to my last 10,000 bells again. So, you know, I feel like I'm back to square one all over again. So my routine has been waking up, managing to scrounge together 50 or 60,000 bells or whatever I need to move a building for that day and demolish a bridge for that day, and then immediately spending it, starting at zero again, and then <laughs> doing it all over again. So. I've really been struggling lately with bells. Um, let me know any of your guys' strategies for making bells that isn't just dealing with the turnip nonsense. I'm happy to hear any advice if there's any good tips or tricks you guys know of to make decent money that doesn't involve ripping your hair out. Also, let me know what you think of the Sherb speed paint. I know I haven't talked about the art in this video as much. I guess I had a lot more to say about making bells than I thought I did when I first started this little rant. But um, I think the Sherb art turned out pretty good and I get why he's a fan favorite because he's super cute and I've seen him in a couple people's different um, villages or islands now and he just is a super nice light blue color that is super cute and he's very cheerful looking and sweet so I get why he's a beloved fan favorite and I had a lot of fun drawing him. I, I like the color scheme I had here for the background, this like blue and purple, but felt he didn't pop against it so I ended up changing it to like... You know, in my mind, I thought it would be funny to do Sherbert colors, you know, like Sherb, Sherb, Sherbert, haha. So I went with kind of like rainbow Sherbert colors, but muted and of course using the limited color palette that I had at my disposal. So let me know what you guys think of the speed paint. Let me know what you guys think about struggles making bells in this game. <laughs> Anything else you want to talk about or rant about, I would love to read it in the comments below. 
Be sure to like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see more Animal Crossing stuff, fan art stuff, uh, animation, illustration, all that good stuff. Hit the subscribe button, I post new videos every single week. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a fantastic rest of your day.